general uh, impact which is coming out very clearly in India is number of rainy days are reducing and uh, the volume of water is about the same which implies that the intensity of rainfall is going to be much higher than what we have been seeing. And uh, this kind of intense rainfall in Himalayas can trigger huge landslides because Himalaya is a very fragile system. Somewhere in 2011, there was a meeting at the level of the Chief Secretary and uh, the issue was uh, raised in that, that we have to come up with the state action plan climate change. At the outset, uh, we said that yes, as Forest Department, we can take this challenge. So we had a lot of consultations, but at the same time, we thought that uh, there has to be a, an assessment uh, of the problem, that to what extent exactly uh, the climate change is hitting our state. We have been investing a lot in this uh, state to understand what is their requirement. We came to understand that the Uttarakhand State Action Plan that they have already done requires an evidence base to make the action plans into really acceptable, practical, doable actions. So they approached us saying that would CDK be able to do that? And since we stand for development first, we thought that yes, and we can provide that technical assistance. Climate vulnerability risk assessment is important for a state to decide, for example, where the investments will be, to decide where the people will be making income or losing income, to decide what assets will be there, will be destroyed, will be damaged, to decide where the water supply will come or not come. So I think for day-to-day -day living, it's very important to know what's the impact of changing climate on every aspect of living. You have to look into where our demands are as of now and versus the availability. Now, are we within the safe limits? If you're not, then the first requirement is to manage your demands. vulnerability and risk assessment for Uttarakhand, some of the big climate impacts are expected to be in the areas of water, agriculture and health. Uttarakhand is a largely agrarian economy dependent on rain-fed agriculture. So erratic rainfall, especially in the summer months, is projected to impact farming livelihoods through crop losses and of course food security for the state. Now increased rainfall also means soil erosion, it could trigger floods, it could also trigger landslides and the impact on lives, livelihoods and infrastructure is going to be quite adverse. In terms of health, temperature is expected to increase across the board on all scenarios. This means increased heat stress, especially in the mountainous districts where they're not used to temperature fluctuations. Considering that the rainfall is going to be a positive effect in uh, Uttarakhand, so they may need to rethink on how to uh, reinvest the additional benefit they are gaining out of water to how they are going to harvest it and utilize it for better, for making agriculture better. We selected those uh, districts and villages based on the vulnerability index from uh, least risk to highest risk and we identified five of the villages in this process including one of the plain area so we found there is difference always there is a difference between the plain area and the uh, situation in the mountains like in plain areas the problem of flood was very high 
problem of this uh, neil guy blue cow was very high and they have shifted from one crop to another and one of the problem that we have identified in the plain area the density of the area is very high they have the big uh, large land holdings but the socio economic status is very poor similarly in the mountains we have found that people are vulnerable to this rainfall because now the rainfall is erratic and also i think one of the key issue is the out migration so all the people talk only about that the migration is due to the uh, uh, livelihood issues but in mountains whatever we have found since last many years and during this study also health and education is also turning one of the key issue When we saw the results of the vulnerability risk assessment, we, we knew we would have a problem then of how do we then take all this science, several hundred pages of very technical, very sophisticated, world-class science, and how do we translate it into a way in which a policymaker can rapidly pick it up and run with it? And so what we started to realize, we had to write some sort of policy briefing. And so the agenda for action came about by thinking, well, it's not just a question of understanding what the science is telling, it's also about understanding where they are and water policy and other developmental objectives, and then trying to map them across each other so we can see these intersections and say, this is where to focus. UNDP is supporting the government of Uttarakhand in establishing the State Climate Change Center which has been identified as part of the state architecture on climate change. And the priority for UNDP is to ensure that the risk vulnerability assessment that has been conducted for the state is actually picked up and incorporated into the regular planning process of all the sectors in the state. We have mooted an idea that to institutionalize climate actions within the development planning of the state, one should start somewhere. So in the beginning, we have given the proposal that even if 1% of the budget of all the respective departments are spent for climate actions, that will pave the way for more meaningful budgetary allocation to climate change considerations in future. People look at its state action plan on climate change. It reads these many thousands of crores. And they are under the impression that from somewhere up in the sky they will get that vast sum of money for implementing the state action plan on climate change. But that is not the point. The point is that the routine development process of the state itself must be geared in accordance with the considerations of the climate change.